before Dead Space came along, survival horror was in a bad place during the seventh console generation. The genre was facing a downturn, with 2008 also giving us the much-anticipated yet disappointing Silent Hill Homecoming alongside the equally disheartening Alone in the Dark reboot. Then, one year later in 2009, we'd see the release of Resident Evil 5, which took a slight downturn in quality for the series and was somewhat of a letdown after the all-time classic that was Resident Evil 4. Smaller franchises struggled too during the 2000s, with the final official Clock Tower game coming in 2002. Meanwhile, 2004's Doom 3 was a valiant attempt to transition from a run-and-gun FPS to a slower, story-driven horror title, but failed to move the franchise forward and ended up seeing the series put on ice for 12 years. The much-loved Fatal Frame series also suffered, with the fourth entry into the series, 2008's Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, only being released in Japan. With all these franchises stuttering and failing, Dead Space was a real diamond in the rough. I'm Daryl for Cultured Vultures, and let's take a look at the history of the Dead Space franchise, a series that succeeded where so many others failed. Hit like and subscribe and we'll be sure not to put microtransactions in our sequel videos, fire everyone, then just redo this video 10 years later for some good PR. 26 years after its release, gamers still look back on System Shock with a lot of love, so it's easy to understand why Dead Space developers Visceral wanted to create a second sequel to the classic sci-fi horror RPG. After Resident Evil 4 was released, the third-person style of gameplay inspired Visceral to create something in a similar vein. Not content with merely copying Capcom's horror masterpiece, Visceral made Dead Space their own. Dead Space's protagonist Isaac Clarke can move freely in combat, unlike RE4's Leon Kennedy who remains rooted to the spot. The combat itself, which skews away from the usual bullet-to-the-head idea of other survival horror games, also implements a limb-severing system, allowing you to dismember the many horrors of the USG Ishimura, adding a tactical element to your confrontations with the Necromorphs. The game also employs Zero HUD, with Isaac's health being indicated by the spine of his suit and weapon info being on the actual in-game weapon itself. Dead Space also featured a silent protagonist, which was very popular in the early part of the 21st century. Dead Space became an instant classic and was a critical success, with the Xbox 360 version performing best, and the PS3 and PC versions also receiving high praise. It wasn't a commercial success, however, and as of the end of 2008, had sold less than half a million copies, though it did break the 1 million sales barrier in 2009. While we will talk about Dead Space spin-offs later in this video, Dead Space Extraction deserved an entry of its own. With the Nintendo Wii doing crazy good business around the globe, it would be foolish for EA not to get in on the motion-controlled madness with the Dead Space franchise. While there's no clear reason why a Wii adaptation of Dead Space didn't happen, although presumably it might have been too much of a job to scale down the game to work on Nintendo's hardware, we instead got this great on-rail shooter. A perfect fit for the console, Extraction blended Dead Space's limb dismembering and dark style with classic light gun gaming. Extraction tasks up to two players with battling through ten chapters and are able to choose routes through the ship, as well as tackling puzzles on the way. Dead Space Extraction was later ported to PlayStation 3 and used PlayStation Move. Dead Space Extraction reviewed well, with an average Metacritic score of 82 for the Wii and 79 for the PlayStation 3. Sadly, it did not sell well at all, according to Visceral themselves, though accurate sales figures were never released. After the low sales of Dead Space and Extraction, you'd be forgiven for thinking that EA would not continue the franchise. Luckily for us, EA was going through one of the let's try and prove we're not a bad company phases and greenlit a sequel. Dead Space 2 had one task, to deliver more of the same and we'd all be happy, but Visceral hit it out of the park with its sequel. One thing that Dead Space 2 did differently was the mute lead character. In Dead Space, Isaac Clarke did not say a word, similarly to the likes of Half-Life's Gordon Freeman, with a technique that developers use to help players feel more immersed in the game's world. Dead Space 2 turns Isaac Clarke into a fully fleshed character, and while the mute character works in a certain fashion, the character of Isaac works much better than he did in the original. Dead Space 2 improved on everything, and the game is probably the best in the series and boasts respectable Metacritic scores, with the PC at 87, Xbox 360 at 90, and the PlayStation 3 at 89. It also featured a multiplayer mode, which was the style at the time, and consisted of two four-man teams of security forces against Necromorph players. Sales were much stronger, with Dead Space 2 shipping 4 million units, 
However, EA still classed the sales as a disappointment, likely due to the high budget. <sighs> okay, Daryl, you can do this. Just get through it. Well, we all knew this was coming. Dead Space had so far been a critical darling, but not a commercial success. The series needed a change, and so Visceral went, quite literally, back to the original drawing board. Dead Space 3's key component would be co-op play, an idea that was first attempted in the original Dead Space. This was actually rather a cool feature, allowing two players to play the game simultaneously, with each player having a slightly different experience due to the difference in mental states of the characters. However, Dead Space 3 followed some of its survival horror peers and leaned towards action-based gameplay, with some sections of the game seeing lead character Isaac fighting armed humans instead of grim Lovecraftian horrors. Sadly, Dead Space 3 moved too far away from its horror roots in an attempt to find a broader fanbase and increase sales for the series, which was confirmed to be the case in a 2013 interview with Dead Space writer Anthony Johnson. Dead Space 3 certainly left a sour taste in the mouths of fans, especially thanks to its microtransactions. However, it didn't do as bad critically as many might think. Its scores range from 76 to 78 for its different platforms on Metacritic, and while that's certainly the lowest of the series to date, it's still rather respectable. Sadly, Dead Space 3's change in direction didn't result in a surge of sales, managing to shift just over 600,000 copies within its launch window, falling well short of the 5 million copies EA was hoping for. Here's perhaps our favourite piece of video game industry nonsense ever, and we love bringing this up. You ready? Okay. Videogamer.com announced from an anonymous source that Dead Space 4 had been cancelled, and EA's Peter Moore denied the accusation and fired back, accusing Videogamer.com of shoddy website journalism shortly before EA cancelled Dead Space 4. <laughs> Incredible! There were even a fair few spin offs of the Dead Space series, the first being the aforementioned Dead Space Extraction. The PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 also saw Dead Space Ignition, a puzzle action game which uses comic motion cutscenes and features mini-game style gameplay. There was also a Dead Space adaptation, although with a different story, for iOS, Blackberry 10, Xperia Play and Android. Despite slightly wonky touch controls, it worked very well and was well received. Sadly, it was delisted from digital storefronts in 2017. Several comics were produced, as well as a novel called Dead Space Martyr. There were also two animated movies released that served as a prequel and sequel to the original Dead Space game called Downfall and Aftermath. Aftermath was seen as an improvement on Downfall, and both movies were praised for their animation, though they do look a little… odd these days. It cannot have escaped your attention that Electronic Arts have announced a Dead Space remake for PS5, Xbox Series and PC developed by Motive Studios. This could have been greenlit following the immense success Capcom has been having with their Resident Evil sequels and remakes. The game is due for release in 2022, and while it is a remake, the developers have said that we can expect them to put their own spin on the classic. But what's that? Not happy with the original devs not being involved in the remake? Well, we've got you covered. Well, not us specifically, but we'd be a bunch of orangutans trying to build a large hadron collider when it comes to making a game. But the original developers are working on a new sci-fi horror game called The Callisto Protocol, which looks a lot like a Dead Space spiritual successor. The game also, strangely enough, has links to the Player Unknown's Battlegrounds universe. Not sure how that'll work exactly, but there's only one way to find out. And there you have it, that is our video on the dysfunctional history of Dead Space. Did you play the Dead Space games back in the day? Are you looking forward to the Dead Space remake coming out in 2022? Let us know down in the comments, we're excited to hear what you're thinking. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the Cultured Vultures YouTube channel, and make sure to also tap that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content coming right here to the channel. Check out the social medias on screen as well, and between all of that, hopefully, we'll catch you in the next one. But until then, until then, kakooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooooo